So Desmond Mead has held a vision to transform the very way in which politics is done in Florida. Like a prophet, Desmond has traveled across the state of Florida, sharing his bold vision to end the disenfranchisement and discrimination against people with convictions, despite countless obstacles, despite people telling him that a ballot measure in Florida wouldn't be possible, Desmond has worked night and day. And when I say night and day, I mean like night and day, to create a movement that, insp that is inspiring people to engage and transform our democracy. Because Desmond Mead has turned the knowledge he gained through his experience of being incarcerated into power, as a person convicted of a felony, he has firsthand experience of being stripped of his, of his civil rights upon returning from incarceration. Though Desmond earned a law degree, I can't call him a lawyer. Because as a person with a felony conviction, he was stripped by the state of Florida of his right to practice law, as well as virtually every other civil rights enjoyed by citizens of our country, including the right to vote. Across the country right now, there are more than five million returning citizens like Desmond Mead, people who have completed their sentences and returned to their communities who are prevented from voting. Because of the racial inequity baked into our criminal justice system, these disenfranchised Americans are disproportionately people of color, especially African Americans. One in five African Americans in Florida are denied the right to vote. Maybe you ought to hear that. One in five African Americans in Florida are denied the right to vote. Their estrangement from the elector electoral process is the demos thesis of political and economic inequality reinforcing itself as action from the other end of the scale. But now, thanks to Desmond Mead and so many of his brothers and sisters, returning citizens may be voteless right now, but they are not voiceless. With Desmond's untiring organizing drive and inspiring leadership, the Florida Rights and Restoration Initiative collected almost a million signatures to put on the ballot this November what long seemed impossible an initiative to restore voting and civil rights to people who have completed their felony sentences. So I need to tell you right now that this is a huge deal. There are 1.6 million people in Florida convicted of a felony. The state of Florida alone makes up 27% of all Americans denied their voting rights due to a conviction. Desmond says, forgiveness is something that's inherent in everyone. All we have to do is educate people. This November, Floridians can give 1.6 million people, uh, uh, 1.6 million of their fellow citizens of Florida a chance at that forgiveness. So we at Demos, are so honored to part with, partner with Desmond and the Florida Rights and Restoration Coalition through our Inclusive Democracy Project. And on a personal note, I have been moved by the way in which Desmond has, an, has inspired the 25 black and brown leaders who are part of the Inclusive Democracy Pro Project. His vision, his boldness, his, his outrageous and courageous love has inspired so many of us to be bolder and more courageous in the work we do. We could not, selfishly, I'm gonna say it, I could not be more excited to honor Desmond with the Transforming American Award.
Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, first of all, you know, um, when I was told about this award, and I'm an emotional guy, and, um, but I'm secure in that, you know? It's okay for a man to cry, right? And those of you all who know me know I am transparent as hell, right? And I give it to you blood raw. Sometimes, you know, say I, I don't have a filter, but I am who I am. And let me tell you, um, we're in the middle of a very amazing campaign, and I can tell you right now that there are some people that have tried to give me awards, right, that I have really turned them down. And the reason why I turned them down is because I know that they're trying to give me an award to attach to this great movement when they had nothing to do with it. You feel me? But when Demos reached out and informed me that I was receiving an award, I was, I was floored. I was extremely honored, and I jumped and embraced the chance. I didn't care if I didn't get to speak. I just wanted to just, just be a part of this because, you know, to share a secret, you know, because this amazing work that we're doing, it, it's shiny and bright now, you know, and, and there's a lot of people that want to attach to it, and we want everybody to attach to it. But there was a time when it wasn't that shiny. There was a time when I was knocking on doors and nobody wanted to answer. There was a time when I traveled the state of Florida 50, thousand miles a year using my student loans to fly to DC and to New York to try to have conversations with people and tell them how important it was that people like me you got the right to vote back and nobody would listen and then there were times when after a couple folks a couple organizations listened and we got this thing started and, and we got uh, 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 the 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 petition printed and approved, it was a time when it got rough and everybody left. And it was just me and my beautiful wife, Sheena. <laughs> but that was the time when I was introduced to IDP. Inclusive Democracy Project, you see, Rodney stood up here and told you all of the things that they were looking forward to do, but what he didn't tell you was the other things that it did just by nature. It became a safe space for people of color in leadership positions. You gotta keep it real with you all, because in these times, people of color in leadership positions were not getting the type of support that they needed to do the work. And we were always expected to do more with less. And when I was struggling, when I was struggling and I was, I was out there by myself, you know, I don't know if you guys ever seen that, that movie called Wanted, you know, where, where I think it was Morgan Freeman that, that led a team of assassins, but when they would go out and they would do their mission and they get beat up and they get hurt, they will always come back to this like regeneration chamber. To, to heal and recuperate so they could be prepared to fight another day. Well, that's what the IDP was to me. At times when I was at my lowest, I had a band of brothers and sisters that was there for me, and Demos provided that space so I could regenerate and I could continue on the mission, and it's because of them I'm here in front of you tonight. And so now, where are we? Well, I can tell you for the past few weeks, every time I've been opening my mouth and speaking to an audience, there's another sound in the back of my head that's been drowning out my words. Tick, tock. Tick, tock. Tick, tock. We are 168 days away from striking the fatal bro to Jim Crow. <laughs> 
tick tock. Tick tock. We are 168 days away from re-enfranchising the largest number of Americans since the women's suffrage movement. With all of the suffering that even my forefathers have gone through, with all of the people that was beaten and hung and burned and bitten by dogs just so I can have the opportunity to step into a voting booth. But yet, we still have four states that still would not let me do it because of a mistake that I made. In 168 days, we ended in Florida. Tick tock. Tick tock. Time is running out. And the question that I ask folks is where do you want to be? Where do you want to be when we're down to zero? What side of history do you want to be on? Because I know there are some folks that like to talk about it. But see, from the neighborhood where I grew up, we like people that like to be about it. When we talk about creating a more inclusive democracy, sometimes it gets hard, and I learned this in IDP, because when we talk about transforming this country, the transformation starts from within. From within, and we have to deal with the hard truth of our biases. We have to deal with the hard truth that as an African-American man that's leading one of the most exciting uh, transformative movements in this country, why can I get the full support that anybody else would get? We have to deal with that. And we have to understand that when we talk about creating a more inclusive democracy, it's a democracy that's good for everyone. So that means that we fight, Heather, we fight just as hard for that guy who think he might want to vote for Donald Trump as we fight for the guy that wish he could have voted for Barack Obama. That means instead of, of running a campaign, Heather, based on fear and, and, and divisiveness, we run a campaign based on love and inclusiveness. You know, when I looked at the, at the, at the aftermath of the hurricanes, when we seen people that came together along the lines of humanity, where I can never forget that image of the African-American man in the boat that stopped and let that white guy get back and go get his Confederate flag. It was in moments like that when this country is great. It's in moments like that when we don't care about a person's sexual identity. We don't care about a person's status. We don't care about a person's conviction. We don't care about a person's wealth. We care about a person because they are a human being and they deserve respect. That's what we're all about. And that is what makes our country great. And we have an opportunity in Florida, 168 days, to show people the right way to transform our country, making it inclusive for everyone, inviting everyone in the picture. And that's why, in spite of all the negative messaging, our numbers keep going higher and higher. No one thought that we'll be polling at 74% and 61% conservative support for this issue. But we're there, we're standing. Tick tock, tick tock. Where are you gonna be? Where are you gonna be in November?